What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman and today we have some absolutely insane and breaking news from none other than the most ubiquitous of MCU industry insiders, Mikey Sutton, friend of the channel and in an exclusive here at Everything Always, the rights for Namor have officially been reacquired by Marvel and what's more, we have a ton of details in tow for how he'll be introduced and used in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're going to break down this exclusive from Mikey Sutton and contextualize it with everything we already know know for Marvel Phase 4 or 5, especially when it comes to Namor's introduction and very soon. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, as well as a whole slew of other Marvel related stuff, including this insane 1 4th scale XM Studios Beta Ray Bill. If you want to be entered to win, all you have to do, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video, and if you want, stick around at the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. So first things first, this is coming directly from industry insider Mikey Sutton, he's a friend of the channel, and really a pillar in the Marvel League community going all the way back to Civil War, although he really doesn't need an introduction, this is the same guy who pegged Spider-Man and Black Panther's arrival in that movie, among a ton of other things. There's a reason Mikey's garnered as much support and the following that he has, and it's doubly amazing that he's willing to share some of his best stories and exclusives with YouTube channels like mine. So Mikey, thank you very much. And in another commonality I have with Mikey, other than just sharing the same first name, he delivers many of his stories and scoops in the form of prose, much like I do here at the channel. And when he does, we read through them word for word. Today's May 23rd exclusive, Namor back at the MCU and Marvel Studios. Namor will not be a superhero, not yet. When the Submariner finally appears in the MCU, he won't be sharing shawarma with the Avengers or beers with Thor. He will eventually join the Illuminati, but that's only after they've experienced his lethal force on New York and Wakanda. Where Namor will debut first remains undecided at Marvel Studios, and they're leaning towards Black Panther 2 or 3. They see him as the perfect adversary for Black Panther, two rulers in possession of extraordinary abilities and high technology. What would happen if a misunderstanding got between them? Marvel Studios has long seen the potential for a Submariner movie, and in fact, they've been wanting to do so for years, even before WB earned a billion dollars for Aquaman. However, rights issues with Universal prevented that. But Sutton sources confirm again that unlike the Hulk, Disney did recover Namor's solo movie rights years ago. Sutton initially scooped an Atlantis Attacks movie for Pete's Basement circa 2015, guys, that's a half decade ago. And now those discussions have awakened again, a tweaked adaptation of both Marvel Comics miniseries with the same name but different plots. Namor is indeed coming, there is no doubt, but it will be a matter of time if Atlantis Attacks will sink or swim in development. Your fly in the ointment, Mikey Sutton. Now there's a couple of things in here that are awesome to unpack, but none better than Marvel Studios having reacquired the rights to Namor years ago, silently having done so really before the insane fan fervor kicked in around Infinity War, and in such, will be able to give us a solo Namor movie eventually. Now, we've heard a lot real recently about how Namor may be introduced in the MCU. There are heavy rumors of him making his debut, well, what's supposed to be this year, what will be early next year in the Eternals, possibly as a child. We've also heard a ton about his introduction in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. At this point though, I've left that at just a rumor up until this leak. Now he seems to imply Black Panther 2, which is another heavily rumored film in which Namor would appear. And even if there is some sort of flashback scene to contextualize Atlantis or maybe even a child Namor during the Eternals, you can be sure it wouldn't be the fleshed out version of the character, the anti-hero and antagonist and or turned protagonist that will get in a full version of the character now during Black Black Panther 2 or maybe even a solo Namor film. As he goes on to say here, an Atlantis Attacks miniseries was what was on the table back then when they first got the rights in development. He said a miniseries by the same name with different plot points that may still be on the table and from everything we've heard about Black Panther 2 and the storylines that it hopes to follow for T'Challa having been snapped and now returning five years later having to reestablish himself again going up against another prince in a secret society, it actually follows along perfectly. Now, this is purely speculation on my part, but something that I had been putting together lightly. Why would Atlantis and Namor show up now? Well, other than them having reacquired the rights and having room to introduce the character. But really, if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. And again, this is purely speculation, but during the snap on Earth, a lot of things would have changed. And it's been rumored they're going to get into this in depth in the upcoming WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier. Try to explain how all of these people who have suddenly shown up again after being 
gone for five years can somehow integrate painfully or not into a society that has well kind of grown and moved on without them. In this moment of confusion, in this change that has happened now once in a lifetime, really once in a historical event with the snap and unsnap, it could be that Namor and his Atlantis society choose they no longer want to live in secrecy in exile, something that may have never happened, there may have been no impetus if there wasn't a snap in the first place. This could lead to his straight up clash with Black Panther and Wakanda, depending on what's already happening there, and that leads to, well, enemies becoming friends in an old trope and him eventually joining sides with Doctor Strange, Black Panther, Reed Richards, who would have been Tony Stark, and of course Professor X in the Illuminati, Easter eggs for Namor, the Illuminati, everything we're talking about has been woven so deeply into the fabric of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in multiple Easter eggs throughout the Infinity Saga. It's no surprise that Marvel pursued all of the rights for their characters Hulk, Spider-Man, and Namor alike in an attempt to try to reunite all of their heroes at home. And while it's understandable that Sony did what they did wanting to keep Spider-Man at home, pun totally intended, that's one of their biggest earning IPs alongside PlayStation in the entertainment division. There's no way they wouldn't want to make that that money. I don't know what's going on with Universal. Why wouldn't you just do the same with the Hulk? Agree upon a number and just say, hey, send the check here. But of course, they probably had no ability to make a Namor movie. And as soon as Aquaman came out and made a billion dollars for WB, if they weren't going to do something on that scale that could rival it, their best bet was to sell it back to Marvel. That's why I'm not surprised this happened. But I am pretty shocked in this day and age where we try to uncover every little detail about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, basically as it's happening in breaking style that this was able to get swept under the carpet, sort of missed in a detail, and then they were able to keep it under wraps for as long as they have. We haven't heard more about production for Namor or any of the other stuff involved with it until real recently here, again with the rumor of Eternals having a young Namor in the beginnings of Atlantis. When you think about the Eternals setting up that deep a history, not only on Earth, but the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole, it only makes sense to introduce that ancient society. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments and a huge thank you to Mikey Sutton, which today happens to be his birthday. So not only thank you, but happy birthday to you, man. Thank you so much for letting me run this story. This was a huge one. It's going to have a lot of fans super excited that have been waiting for Namor in the MCU for quite some time. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Hey, did you see this coming? How hyped are you now that the rights are back at Marvel? According to Mikey Sutton and his sources, what does this mean for the MCU that they can now make Namor solo films at another other character to the pile and really expand the Marvel Cinematic Universe not only outwards into the cosmos but here on Earth in a way that they haven't already and let me know down in the comments your thoughts on what Marvel needs to do exactly to make this movie different than Aquaman they've never read like the same characters Aquaman and Namor although a lot of people like to think that they are I'm sure this movie is going to be very different I'm all ears let me know your thoughts down below and quickly let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go we're still giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros we're giving away two now at the 700,000 subscriber mark. We just announced a winner for the 650 sub count PS4 Pro a couple of days ago. If you missed that video, just scroll back through the channel. If you want to be entered to win, all you have to do, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video. That'll automatically enter you to win all the rest of the prizes we're giving away here at the channel, like this insane XM Studios 1 4th scale beta ray bill. This will be given away at the 650,000 subscriber count. And guys, if you're not familiar with collectibles, this this is in no way an action figure. Standing at almost 29 inches tall, these are immaculate one-fourth representations of some of your favorite Marvel characters. XM Studios is by far one of the best in the business. If you're not familiar with this statue, I've left a link down in the description over on Gem Mint Collectibles. Gem's a friend of mine. We acquired this statue through the Gem Mint Collectibles store. He actually did a full in-depth breakdown of this statue. So if you want to see this prize in much further detail, go ahead and click on that link. Like I said, it's down in the description. Also, so make sure to uh, follow his channel while you're over there and show Gem some love. Either way, if you want to be entered to win any of the prizes here at the channel, the PlayStation 4 Pros, the Beta Ray Bill statue, or any of the other prizes we announce, hopefully as we double down all the way up to a million over the next couple of years, all the same rules will always apply. 
hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell with notifications turned on, leave a like and a comment on this video, and because it's truly random, the more videos you like and comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos, just like we're doing here, and if you've missed any of the past winners, especially here real recently, as I said, we just gave away a PlayStation 4 Pro at 650k, no worries, all you have to do is scroll back through the channel, look for the subscriber count and the winner in the title, click on that video, and scroll to the end. My name's Michael Roman, this is everything always, guys, thanks for checking out the channel and stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.